So we had begun our discussion with the practice of Kaya Stadium. And we found out that Kaya Stadium is the basis, the foundation for being able to first know the mind. Then we will harness the mind. To know the mind, you need to know more about it. And that can only be done by observation. And that is where the first part of mind management comes in. You cannot hope to master the mind by going in confrontation with it. You need to befriend the mind. So, this is what is very essential. And how can we befriend the mind? Because the mind is like a wild elephant. It is a gradual process. It is not an instant process. We might want it to be an instant process because we are all in the world of instant gratification. But instant nirvana is not anything which is possible. It is always a journey. Step by step, we have to reach there. And then the final shift will happen in a snap. But for that final shift to happen in a snap, a lot of journey has to be covered. And if we don't cover that journey, that final snap will snap us, break us. So we have to be very, very careful. This path is known as Churasya Dhara. It is so difficult that it is, they say, easier to walk on the razor blade. You have the sharp edge. And if you have to walk on that sharp edge, it is easier to walk on that edge than to master the mind and go beyond. So we need to be very, very careful. We need to know where our harness is, which is going to hold us when we lose the balance. If we don't do that, we are going to lose the balance and fall down. So all these precautions have to be taken. When we look at deepening our journey. So, before we go ahead, I would like to ask you, now that you have been practicing for so long, what do you think can we can be the way to befriend the mind, master the mind, know the mind, and then transcend the mind? So, what is your opinion? What do you think is the way? Let me do a uh, yogic diary, mentally yogic diary. First, observe our strength, then weakness and all that. Swan, swan. Very good. That is one step. But tell me, how many of us are actually writing the diary? We know the way. But we don't practice it now. Now, what is the what is the difficulty in writing the diary? It's very difficult to write. Does it take a lot of time? No, it doesn't. But still. We are unable to write the diary. Why? We feel that uh, the other uh, things are very prior, prior, prior to us. Important. Priorities are different. Important. And also, so then, I think, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, Swamiji, and also, I think, like for me at least, you know, it's easier to follow the uh, external structure than going inward or, you know. Uh, uh, taking time to do that requires, yeah, 
Yeah, <laughs> it's easier to attend the classes, practice it, than do it on your own. And, uh -huh. right. For me, yeah. yeah, very true, very true. It is easier. You have touched upon a very very important chord. It is easier to follow and do the classes than to do it yourself. Why is it so? That self-regulation, that inner journey and dedication, time, all those factors <laughs> to me, like, you know. No, I mean, come on. See, when you come to the class, you are the people who are doing everything. I'm not doing anything. So there is no difficulty in doing. Where is the difficulty? You come to the class, you attend the class, you, you know, you do things. So therefore, that means that the uh, sincerity, the uh, dedication, the desire to do everything is there. Lack of determination. Yeah, that is one thing. Which means that the mind plays tricks with us. One of you just now mentioned that our priorities are not right. If our priorities are not right, then all of you would not be here during Deepavali. This is important to you. That's why you have been able to take out that time. The point is that the mind plays tricks on us. One example is that, oh, I need to do this. Oh, I need to do that. Oh, I need to do this, that, the other. Somebody had given a wonderful example. They said that when we are talking, suppose there is a meeting going on and this meeting is very important. And when this important meeting is going on, if there is a telephone call which comes in, this was this was a discussion which was about 10 15 years ago at that time mobiles were not uh, uh, no so it would be more than 10 15 years ago what whatever mobiles were not uh, um, very uh, prevalent and common it was the uh, wired uh, telephone which was there so you could not actually look at uh, the screen and say who is uh, the caller so you, you would not know that so at the, in that situation, you are having an important meeting and the phone rings. What happens? You go and pick up the phone because you do not know if it is important or not. And it turns out to be something which is rather trivial. But it was what that person called as a high interrupt. And something which was important was let aside and something which was actually less important was given higher priority. Who did this? Our mind does this. So, uh, the difficulty in checking out the priorities or not being able to do ourselves because left to ourselves, then, oh, I, I would like to do this, I would like to do that. Why? Because it is the mind. You see, when we sit down and close our eyes for Kaya's theorem, what we spoke of yesterday, we immediately the mind is filled with thoughts and desire to move the hand. Oh, there's pain here. Oh, there's a scratch there. Oh, this, oh, that, whatever else. Why? It is the mark of a fecal mind. This mind is what needs to be managed. Because we are not able to mind, manage this mind, therefore, <laughs> this becomes the difficulty. That is our Icha remains an Icha. It is not converted into an Icha Shakti. When that force comes into it, then there is. You have a kite or let us say, you know, in, in childhood we used to make those paper uh, planes and uh, throw them. You throw them, the dar, where does it go? Sometimes it goes to the left, sometimes to the right. It goes anywhere, it, you know, a random path. Why does that happen? Because there is no single force pushing it. Suppose this path, now let us take, the, uh, instead of the dark, let us say it's the kite and your kite you have thrown out. Huh? The kite is flowing here and there by the wind. But if you have a string which holds the kite down, 
and through that you are able to shift around then you can navigate the kite and you can take the kite to its direction otherwise it is just you know floating away that is so what is, our, is mind, this... our mind needs some anchor when there is an anchor when there is a weight which is put in then at that point the direction starts coming in what we are now doing is trying to give it an anchor then we are able to make a shift yes somebody was asking something is this uh, this anchor and that force um, giving us a uh, direction is guru you have said it very rightly you need some external ultimately the guru is internal swami ji has said it many times the guru is internal but we are not able to go inside so what do we do we need to have an external guru who can guide us but there are two important points which we need to understand over here first point is that paramahansa ji had once said that the real guru is inside but you need an external guru so that you can connect to the guru inside in the same manner as you have a bomb and you have a detonator and you have a third person who activates the detonator the detonator is not where the bomb is the detonator and the bomb are at different places the bomb is inside us or inside the building where we want to demolish the building but the detonator is outside so the external guru is the detonator and the guru is internal but if you do not have the detonator you can never activate that inner guru so first important point is this and second important point which is very very crucial for all of us disciples is that swami shivanand ji had said the guru can only inspire and direct it is up to the disciple to get up and walk the path walking the path is not the guru's job walking the path is our job you have a coach and the coach will tell you that in such situation do this in that situation do that everything can be told but actually you are the person who has to go out and play the coach is not going to play for you that's not his role in the same way the guru is not going to sit down and remove your difficulties that is your job when you try hard and you are unable to succeed when you get stuck then the guru gives you a direction hints and there, there is the third part those gurus who are the siddha gurus siddha mahatmas swami ji used to say they never tell things directly they only hint and he had given the example of ramakrishna paramhamsa and swami vivekanand ji ramakrishna paramhamsa ji never told swami vivekanand okay now you have to go around the country you have to uh look at all things and you have to go and spread the message no all ram krishna paramahansa ji said was oh this is such a great civilization so powerful so amazing and yet people don't know anything about it there was only one person who could pick up that concept and that person could go out and strive hard that was ram krish uh, that was swami vivekanand ji others also did at their own level but what swami vivekanand ji could do was not what others could do but 
Swami Vivekanand ji did not get it on a platter just because he was a favorite of Ramakrishna Paramhamsa. No. You read the books of Swami Vivekanand ji and his journey. Look at the hardships he had to undergo. He was all but lost. And then the hand of support came in. We have to walk that path. We have to strive. We have to go the way beyond our abilities and keep walking that path determinedly. Don't allow anything to come in between. And when something comes in between and we get distracted, no problem. We just come back to the path. We don't have to come uh, re reverse, but we just join the path. I have set upon a road journey from point A to point B. And in between, I got into a detour. So if I have got into a detour, tell me what will I do? What is your logic? I am going from, let us say, uh, Kanyakumari to Kashmir. And halfway through somewhere, there was a detour and I got uh, lost into that detour. I got distracted. And I have reached a point C. Now, what will you do? Will you go back to point A and then go to point uh, B? Or where, what, what is it that you will do? Let me know. Come back to the path, Swamiji. So, right. you will find a way to reach that path. Whatever is, wherever you are, you re-evaluate your situation, reassess and find the closest way that you can go back to that path. That means we don't have to close our eyes. We can't have our blinker vision. We need to be observant. We need to be open. We need to be having all things available because, mind you, the hint might come anytime and if I am not aware, I might miss it out. So, this is very important. But the topic today was not of Guru. The topic today was of walking the path of managing the mind. And we shall continue this journey tomorrow. Because now we need to understand. We need to go deeper. We need to start walking our paths. It's not sufficient just to do a little bit here, a little bit there and so on. No, it has to be an integrated practice moving ahead. I might move at an ant space, doesn't matter. But the ant knows very well where it has to go and the ant reaches. You know that story of the hare and the tortoise. Tortoise is much slower, but it is a tortoise who's, who reaches because the focus is there. So that is what we have to do. We shall continue our discussion tomorrow. Hari Om Tatsat Namo Narayan Jai.